much to the organizers for the invitation to share our work. Uh, maybe just to start by saying that I'm not gonna talk about gene therapies. I'm gonna talk about a cell therapy uh, first in class. It's sounded so sci-fi for many years, uh, but now I'm happy to report that it's happening. And uh, this is a first in class GABAergic cell therapy that has just begun clinical investigation for drug resistant focal seizures and uh, really excited to be here to share an update. So our goal with the cell therapy was to uh, develop a, um, a cell type that could provide and restore the inhibitory neurotransmitter GABA um, in a targeted way to regions of refractory focal seizure onset. Now, most of the GABA in the pallium comes from uh, GABAergic local circuit neurons called interneurons. And uh, these uh, interneurons, for, to us, you know, when we thought about what cell type we would make, seemed to be the ideal target for physiologic cell replacement in the pallium, where seizures are starting in the pallium. Now, um, the question was, how are we going to do that? Because it turns out that most of our paleal interneurons are born before we're born during neurogenesis in the fetal brain. And in fact, most of these paleal interneurons uh, come from a little uh, region called the medial ganglionic eminence, or MGE, um, during second trimester brain development. And so the only way that we could uh, target this lineage was to turn to a pluripotent stem cell system. The concept is very straightforward, but the execution is extremely difficult because we're starting with a single human embryonic stem cell line that's clinical grade. And our company has gotten really good at coaxing these cells into becoming this very specific lineage of MGE precursors, and then taking those precursors and developing them further into this very specific class of uh, MGE paleal interneuron. The cells are then frozen for distribution, uh, future distribution to clinical sites. Um, a couple of attributes to note is that these are extremely high purity uh, cells. So there, more than 98% of the cells in the vial are this very specific MGE paleal GABAergic interneuron type. Um, they're also at a post-mitotic stage. So when they're harvested, they're actually already secreting GABA uh, and they're not expanding, they're not proliferating after we administer them, which is really important for us. And um, we've already produced a GMP grade, lots of product to supply enough of these cells for all of the 40 subjects in the phase one, two trial that I'll introduce to you today. So the next question is, could these post-mitotic neurons be durable in a relevant preclinical model of the patients we seek to treat? Um, we used a, what we think to be one of the best models for this population. And this is a, um, a mouse model where chemoconvulsant canate is injected into one hippocampus. And we wait for a month for these mice to develop uh, chronic, spontaneous, recurrent focal seizures, which we can measure with an implanted intracranial EEG electrode. And by this time, these mice have developed pretty classic uh, temporal lobe sclerosis. Um, and, and, um, and then after the, in the second month, we administer the cell therapy or a vehicle control. On the right is an example of uh, how these, let's see, I can't point, um, how these, this, the cells look after a single administration into the hippocampus of this mouse. And this is nine months after they were administered. And these cells persist very robustly and stably into the sclerotic hippocampus uh, nine months later, which is about as long as we can look in the model. The next, um, on the bottom left, we looked at seizure frequency, um, looking at the EEG data. Each of these data points is about a week of EEG data, intracranial. Um, and um, I'm showing you three time point points <clears throat> after the single uh, cell administration. And what you can see is that the first time point, six weeks after implant, there's no difference between the cell or vehicle control groups. That's because it takes a few months for the cells to integrate and mature. But by five months, the cells are fully effective. And we see that most of these animals become focal seizure free. Uh, in, in fact, they're stably so, as long as we can look out to uh, seven months, seven, we've even got nine months post-transplant. Uh, minus 100 is completely uh, seizure-free in this, in this graph. 
We've done this consistently, it's reproducible. We've done it over a dozen times with different lots of the product. And we consistently see most of these cell-treated animals becoming seizure-free. We also looked at the uh, hippocampal sclerosis. <clears throat> and um, again, consistently we see that um, the hippocampal damage is reduced in the animals treated with cells. And then uh, this model in epileptic uh, mice is, uh, is uh, more terminal. It has a high mortality rate. Um, and in the animals treated with the cells, we um, importantly saw uh, increased survival in the cell treated animals. We wondered if this reduced uh, sclerosis could be detected non-invasively. And so we looked with uh, Miriam Chamey's lab at UCSF uh, using magnetic resonance spectroscopy. And we identified a panel of potential metabolite biomarkers uh, that tracked with epilepsy in the mice and reduction of seizures in the cell treated animals. And we will explore these in the clinical trial. <clears throat> so safety is paramount for this first in human study. Um, this is a snippet from our toxicology work in uh, epileptic and naive rodents, uh, where we looked at a battery of behavioral assays in the mice. And um, we looked very carefully at activity, uh, sedation, which would be a common effect of too much GABA in the brain. We looked at memory, spatial, uh, novel object recognition. We didn't see any perturbations, even at the highest doses um, of the cell therapy in the animals. We then looked at the, um, at the long-term engraftment of the cells. You can see at three days in the middle, you can see little deposit of the cells, but by 90 days post transplant, the cells have fully integrated and dispersed um, into the tissue. Importantly, they stay restricted to the hippocampus, uh, to the temporal lobe. And we did that in uh, long-term uh, distribution, biodistribution studies. There were no toxicities or pathologies, no do dose limiting toxicity at the highest feasible doses in this study. Now for clinical delivery, this is gonna be an MRI guided intracerebral uh, in, uh, delivery, uh, which is gonna be mimicked off of the existing uh, laser ablation uh, uh, procedure. And so the, <clears throat> the cell cannula is inserted transoccipitally up the longitudinal axis into the, uh, of the hippocampus. It's several deposits made in the hippocampus uh, as, it's, as it's withdrawn. This work was uh, fine-tuned by Kim Birchall uh, and uh, developed by Virginia Carlson at OHSU and the Oregon National Primate Center. And we did this in a number of uh, rhesus macaque, non-human primates, to show that we could accurately deliver the cells, uh, safely deliver the cells, um, we could see them on MRI going in on target and they engrafted very well uh, and tolerated very well without any toxicities or pathologies to note. So this brings us to the design of the trial, which was uh, IND was cleared a few months ago and we are actively recruiting. It's a um, uh, safety and efficacy study in 40 people who have drug resistant mesial temporal lobe epilepsy. Um, it, it's gonna be, the first phase is an open label dose escalation with two doses. Uh, and this will be, um, it, it's actively recruiting at five to 10 uh, medical centers across the US. We'll be looking at safety as well as efficacy uh, at one year. And then the second phase will move to a randomized uh, control uh, trial of the cells versus the sham procedure. And so we are um, really thankful for the opportunity to share the update. The trial is happening now. Uh, we're enrolling, uh, really thankful to our clinical collaborators, and we're looking for additional sites to, uh, to roll this trial out to um, as, we, as we move forward. So happy to take any questions. Thank you.